Jones. This is Deontay the Bronze from Wilder. Heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Domus tripped young and intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, gossip, all the hot topics RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, they got the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest Go check out the art even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya From spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about son Real fans, real talk dot com, I'm out one Real fans, real talk, real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk Real fans, real talk dot com Real fans, real talk dot com Alright, I guess we are live here on Real Fans, Real Talk You heard the theme music, you didn't get to see the intro But you got to see me dance along to it So that that, that works just as good A little a little change up here Since it is uh, the World Series We, we pitched the change up there for you guys <laughs> and uh you know but it's great to be back for another live episode of real fans real talk as i mentioned the world series is going on uh football mid-season right now giants have a bye week coming up this week so we don't have to watch them lose thankfully and uh a lot going on basketball is starting up and uh a lot of exciting things going on in the world of sports trip young Oh yeah, man. I mean, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little hurt still. I'm still going through the motions, um, you know, of a win down in the ALCS. But you know, you gotta, you gotta move on. I'm proud of my young guys out there. You know, Judge and Sanchez, Didi, uh, Robertson. You know, all of these guys, Tanaka, Severino. Everybody, they, they did a great job. You know, they outplayed. You know, and, and surpassed the expectations of most of us. You know, so shout out to to all you guys. Salute, um, but you know we still got a whole lot, a lot of more, a lot of sports to get into, and we're gonna do yep. that in a second. But uh, before we do, Legend in Two Games, Eric Sanchez. You already know, excited to be back. Another great episode. Um, I want to take the time to express my condolences to you guys and your team being eliminated. Shout out to Ladybug's pops because I know he had a beer, just like I had a beer when the Yankees got eliminated. Great time the other night. Eric, Amazing I'm a, time. <laughs> Eric, I, 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 I'm gonna tell you. I'm going to tell you once again. Amazing. I'm going to tell you once again, Eric, keep that negativity I mean, away from me. It, it is what it keep is. the negativity uh, away from me. I had a Heineken just like I'm sure Ladybug's dad had a Heineken. Yeah, he had a cool yeah, oh, he had the, a cool light already. The, re- the rest of the Mets have been having a lot of Heinekens on the golf course for the past, been, you know. We've been drinking yeah. for a month and a half. Our season's been over. You, know, you, you, you guys have been it drinking it all season. We've been drinking it up. Exactly. You've been drinking all season. So what? That's why you ain't So what? Now you can drink it up with us. You drink it up right We're going to do some drinking tonight because Ammo is back and she got this whole Halloween bar motif set up. Um, dope, super she got to make there. some stuff later. We're going to show y'all later in the show exactly what she's going to do with it. But right now, she's over there. She's channeling her inner Foxy Brown right now um, with her Afro <laughs> puffs and everything. I got to compliment you on it, Ammo. All right. But you know, we're going we gonna to rock out like that. They don't want to, sh- they don't do melt. Okay. They, okay, listen, I'm, I'm tra- there you go. I was trying to get them to show you on the camera. I didn't, you know, they need to see you at home. And look at Ladybug. La- ladybug La- working on the suspension, getting, yeah. getting drunk already. Wait a minute. I, First I, I, one I, I, by I, I, the bar. Ladybug, you, I have nothing in my hand. We don't want to see you on this table. Don't start drinking too early, okay? Ladybug, you got to wait for the rest from of the us. bottle. From the yeah. Face. Oh. Ladybug, and don't we'll, worry about that. We already put your appeal in the, in the works. Your, yeah, your you appeal could. paperwork is already in there. You know, this we know this is your fourth suspension in the last two months, so we're working oh, on that. Don't worry about it. That. That's true. Don't and worry about we pour on those shots back there. She's got you know a, a Ezekiel okay. Elliott's yeah, yeah, yeah. lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. we don't want to see her. Yeah, so it's all good, but it, and it's all love. But go ahead, Statman, start us off. Well, uh, LeVar Ball talking a lot of trash, and his son actually backed it up for the first time ever. Um, well, did no, the Sun no. back it up, or did the Lakers? Yeah, I well, say, I think I it up. Yeah. Cause, cause six lot, points and ten boards. I mean, yeah. ten assists. They ain't really backing it up. Yeah, I mean, 
A win is a win. Yeah, yeah. Win and that's why I said I would say the team backed it yeah. up. Well, after his his first performance, Lavar Ball said it was a great performance with the one when he was with Stephen he, A. Smith. And Stephen A. Off. Smith is like, yeah. what game were you watching? Yeah, when it, when so. it comes to his children, he's a he's a bit off on you know what they can and cannot do on the basketball court. And I think after game one, that was you know, uh, you know, a, a definite. He was having delusions of grandeur. And he thought he saw something that none of us watched. I don't know what game he watched. Again, you know, last night the Lakers did get the win, mm-hmm. but he didn't have a have a good game. You know I mean, ten rebounds is good. I'll take ten rebounds, but I mean, six points. I think it was one for eight from the field. Yeah, he was disgusting last night yeah. shooting wise. Um, I give Lonzo a lot of credit though. Lon- Lonzo conducts himself with a lot of composure. Um, he has no choice. No, but we can't say that. There's, there's a lot of 19, 20 year olds that get in the league and they full of themselves and they, and they don't conduct themselves the right way. He didn't get in the back and forth with John Wall. He doesn't really buy into all the things his dad says. He's not pulling he was, out his He was chest. respectful no. in his exactly, press conference. Yeah. He's all, he's, John Wall's a great player. And, he conducts himself you know. the right way. LeVar, though, they've got to cut him off at the bar. They got to cut him off because it's too many drinks on the house for LeVar. Yeah. He's just acting up, he's going crazy. At, at the forum, he knows what he's doing. I mean, he he, he's a promoter, spectacle. If he, if, yeah. he, if he was, you know, the typical politically correct person, we wouldn't even know who he is. You know, he's he, he's got to say, talented, but yeah, he's, he's got to say things off the wall in yeah. order to to get his, his attention. He just like say Big Ball of Brand stock was up twelve percent yeah, <laughs> in that, well. in that uh, interview. So. You know, he, I mean, he's, he's, doing he's, right. he's even texting the, the created character on NBA 2K. He's got his, his he's, you know, yeah. the created character says, "What about when I win Rookie of the Year?" And he goes, "No, you know, Lonzo's got that since, since he was an embryo." Yeah, and then he's like, I, "I got that. He's got that since he was a thought in my mind." I think you know, I think so. that that's well. I mean, that's not the only thing he's been wrong about. He's been wrong about a lot of things on you know on the court, but uh, he's yeah, definitely right going to be wrong about too, about about that because I, I, you know the way Ben Simmons is balling right now, he's looking like a lot if he keeps this up if he can stay healthy because uh, Lonzo's numbers is definitely not there. And on top of that, Jason Tatum is actually playing Jason some pretty Tatum, good yeah. ball out in Boston as well. You know, so he got a little more work to do before we could just throw him in that rookie of the year. Category he can't be going one for eight on, on, on every other night on a prime time night. Yeah, yeah, he still got a lot of work well, to do. I but mean, like I said, he's it, conducting himself the right way, and I think he's going to be all right. Yeah, he's going to be all right forward. in the league. He, he's he's going to figure gonna, it out. It's going to be harder when people are are gunning for him. Gortat, you know, decided to talk for Wall and yeah. say that he was going to torture him for forty eight minutes. He and, actually played well. Yeah. Gortat. John Wall, not so much. You know, John it wasn't Wall, his yeah. best performance. Bradley Bill had a pretty good night, a really good night actually, twenty eight points. John Wall, he didn't he didn't shoot too well from the field. I think he was what, seven for twenty two yep. from the field. So you know, but I mean, again, he wasn't the one that that made the the, the statements what the time did, but he definitely didn't show and prove. He did outplay Lonzo Ball, but it didn't take much because again, he only had Lonzo six had points. Six and so we're gonna yeah. be dealing with this all year with Lonzo Ball. Oh yeah, every game. With LeVar, yeah. absolutely. Well, you know what? Because see his. The thing, you know, with, with Lonzo and LeVar, everybody, you know, he had that horrible first game. Then the second game, he, you know, almost had a triple-double. But, again, people look past the fact that it's the Suns and they just come came off of losing by 48 mm-hmm. points yeah. uh, in, in their first game. So, you know, you should play well against a team that's playing yeah, that, that bad. I but mean, he comes we, back. We can't we can't use that as an indictment of of Lonzo Ball because he almost had a triple double against the Suns. I mean, how many bad teams does Russell Westbrook have triple doubles against? A lot of them. Uh, right then, so it is what it is. You but play he also who's on has schedule. them against the good teams too. Yeah, but I'm you saying you got to put play, those numbers against the good. But you play who's on the schedule against though. Against the the good teams as well. Yeah. yeah, but every team is on a schedule versus Westbrook too, and he's putting up triple doubles right. versus the what good. What Tripp is saying is it's too early to tell. And and, no, you know, I mean, you can't really go. A triple double, still a triple double. Exactly. So I'm, I'm with it's, you on that, but it's early you know, in the it's season. It's not like, like uh, there, he's doing there. it against a yeah. high school you team, know. even though they're playing like a high school team. But you know, well, Phoenix has a lot of other issues that they got to deal with. They do. But I mean, like I said, who, the coach whoever's on the schedule been, is on the schedule. Has been fired. Simple as that. So they're they're out of there. Um, Earl Watson, he's uh, he's done. He's yeah. done. And uh, Eric Bledsoe. He's mentally done. He's still under contract with the Suns right now, but mentally he's ready to get up out of there. He might be a Nick, too, from what, with the rumors. Hornacek used to coach him, and yeah. the, yeah. he, he, something he's considering. 
They don't. The, the, the Knicks saying they don't want to give up Fritz Frank to. Uh, well, we we've already established get... that the Knicks don't know what they're doing at all. Mm -hmm. So to say that you, you don't want to trade French Frank for Eric Bledsoe is, is ridiculous. It's well, stupid. I don't think that will be the only piece. If that's the only piece, then it's it's completely no no no. Well, because the contract would have to match up as well, so they'd have to uh, send over we got, somebody. We we've got a little bit of cap space. We can make the move with uh, French Frank and, and Courtney Lee. We can make the move with those two guys right Listen, there. Listen, I'll get rid of French Frank. Okay, for you know Eric Bledsoe is a great point guard, two way player. I mean, and he's he's what twenty seven, twenty eight years old. Twenty eight. Twenty eight years old right now. I, I like that. I like I like Eric Bledsoe running with with uh, Porzingis and Cancer, who's actually you know he's been playing really great. What he had sixteen and nineteen last night. I know the teams you know they, they have they haven't you know won, but you know Cancer's been looking really good. Porzingis. You know he's well. We know Paul Singer is, is, is a star. He's going to be a superstar in this league very soon. So you throw in a, a season point guard like Eric Bledsoe, the Knicks might show the some team improvement. Still sucks. I said might show some improvement. Still I didn't sucks. say they weren't going to suck. I said they might still show some sucks. improvement. Okay, that man. I see the way that man's looking at me. First of all, but we we've had. I'm the one that's supposed to be getting punishment. on the Knicks on on, on the show. I, it let is me, what it is. I was trying Knicks to get on that man. You see, I try to give y'all some props. I, well, I gotta stop. Don't doing give well, us any props. We suck. Since we're on the <laughs> yeah, subject yeah. of the Knicks, I think it's time to make a drink. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. See? And that's how you segue right that's, in. You know what, Statman, You should have wore your shirt tonight. Yeah. yeah. This team well, makes me drink. I mean, if I knew Ammo was coming with with, <laughs> with, with some all the goodies she got back there. It's Halloween. We got candy here, trick or treats. We got. Oh, we got a whole got bunch a whole, of stuff. What's going on? You know, yeah. we got a whole all in the Halloween spirit today. Charms so. lollipops in there. What you like? Ammo, yo, you know what, Ammo? <laughs> Ammo hooked it up, and she's gonna hook up them drinks for exactly. us. Exactly. We need to take. Yeah, let's. We gonna take a five real quick for Ammo. Can we get a, a camera on Ammo, please? Just get one of the cameras, please. She's so beautiful back there. She's pretty. She's pretty. Look at her. Got the bar. What's going got on? The you got spider web. You got oranges right. back there, cut up and what? And, all right. So what I'm cool. making is called a spicy. Mary Jane. I like it's my Mary own. Jane. Of course you do. That's course right. You. I make it spicy. The song I'm talking about. Make it spicy. Spicy. So just take a little melon green, orange, blue. I'm not going to do that today. <clears throat> and just, you know, fuck this, fuck this. Sorry. Whoa, whoa. Easy, easy. <laughs> easy. This is live TV. Yeah. My bad. Oh, Damn. <laughs> Excuse there you go. Out of me. <laughs> Is this look like potion? Is that witch's brew you making? What? Like, what? what's going on? All right, there we Halloween, go. Like, Somebody need to get a closer. Oh, oh. This is this is going crazy go. right now. Cauldron. Yes. Is this still? Here you go. Bubble, oh. bubble, toil and trouble. All that. <laughs> what the heck? You might have to be here for this. That's there you go. Be here. Look at that. All right. Hey, well, you getting real scientific back there. <laughs> Where's your Bunsen burner? There you go. Some lime. Oh my. There you go. And if you can hear, you can hear it like bubbling. Yeah, oh. you can hear it. Can you hear it? <laughs> this is the rising. Oh, no, he's on the sprint now. The rising guy's on sprint now, so he can't hear it. <laughs> All right. Smell good, too. Huh? Oh, you smell it from here? Yeah. Yep. All right. Oh, yo, this is crazy right now. <laughs> this is yo. Yo, right here. Oh, Halloween spirit. Spirit. Yeah. Oh, she brought me Oh, and look at that. Look. She got, what is, is that champagne? What, what kind of glasses you got over there? Nah, that looks crazy right there. What's, like, what are we drinking? Is that zombie <laughs> juice? Like, what's <laughs> oh, I think I need to put a little more. Yeah, word. Yeah. Yeah. The, the green yeah, monster? Yeah, word. <laughs> That's the green monster right there. <laughs> can I get a close-up on this? Yeah. Like, I don't even know if I want to drink it. I just want to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> let me get a close-up on this. this, we'll this. Yeah, get, yeah, somebody can. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put some more. Look at it, look at it. How it tastes? Look at it. Oh, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't taste it. Oh, I'm a taste tester. <laughs> of course, you would be the first one to exactly. drink. Exactly. I, I like how <laughs> you strategically right flashed yourself right there by the ball. <laughs> you always need Waiting a taste on tester. the suspension. No. Lady it bug. definitely, there you it go. definitely tastes uh, spooky. It <laughs> tastes spooky. Wow. It's spooky. I don't know what that means. Lady I think it's good. You don't want to Yo. play with this drink. You making it tougher for me to put your appeal in. They got you on camera. They got you on camera acting up. Exactly. Right. You talking about Ooh, the taste shit. spooky. All right. There you go again. We're canceled now. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> She's trying to Shout out to whatever sponsors still want to come down with us. Right, right. <laughs> Shout out to Soundview Liquors. There you go. Exactly. Word, word. <laughs> Shout out to Soundview <laughs> Liquors. We appreciate word. it. We passing this down? Yep. Passing it down. 
You might as well definitely, pass another one. This yeah. one's gonna be gone quick. Definitely, uh, definitely. Be careful now, see? Exactly. I'm gonna wait though. I'm gonna wait. It's crazy back there. It's, look, it's looking good. It is. Yeah, give me, give me, put one of them oranges in my drink. Shoot, I, I want to try the orange. Oh, you want the orange? That's right. And definitely, listen. It definitely got a shout out again, Soundview Liquors, for holding Absolutely. us down with the ball. We definitely appreciate y'all. Of course, ammo. Putting it all together. Again, exactly. if you want to follow me, hire me, or whatever, follow me on Instagram at Ammo the Bartender. It's spelled exactly how it sounds. Exactly. And you get a <laughs> discount on our security team. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> how is it? Now you guys. We're about to try it right yeah, now. We're going to wait. We got to wait. We got to all have a, have a, a oh, drink okay, together. Yeah, yeah, let me get mine. Let me get mine. Exactly. This is real crazy you right can now. Hear what's it going on? Still. I, it's, it's really I don't think like, nobody that's expected L right this there, demo. Though. Like we none of us expected this. I'm yeah, good with surprises. You no, know, you're going all out with the all Halloween. Right. Got the goodie super. bags and everything. Exactly. Okay. Here we go, guys. <laughs> all right. Yo, shout out to Ammo on this right here. Exactly. <laughs> Happy <laughs> Halloween. This is a real fans, real talk Halloween right here. Yeah. Happy yeah. Halloween, yeah. everyone at home. Be safe this uh, Halloween season. Have yes. fun. Exactly. Don't throw no eggs. All right, because I know how y'all people get on Halloween, and we throw no eggs. And if you trick or treat and be safe and hold your kid's hand, don't just let them run wild it's in the streets. Drink. It tastes kidding. like candy, too. Oh, that's a good drink there. It, it's that's a good drink. Be generous with the candy for the kids. It right. actually tastes like don't, candy. Don't be hiding and turn the lights off when you hear the doorbell. Mmm. Mmm. That's more honest. Oh, that's that good, little, Ammo. Yeah, that got a little kick to it, Ammo. I like that. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Right on. Now, what do you right. call it? Spicy? Spicy Mary Jane. Oh, but it tastes spicy like candy. Mary Jane. It, do, it, it yeah. tastes, it tastes like, like candy. trick or treat candy. It's just like candy. It definitely does. <laughs> mm -mm. So before you guys get infatuated mm. with the drink, because oh, yeah. you guys yeah, are being lusty on candy. Well, I, I, was, I, was, I was really going to go. Mm. <laughs> so we got a lot going See, on I was right just now. about to do that with no. my own segue, exactly. but you go on and go. So speaking of drinking, someone else who will also have time to drink is Joe Girardi, who is no longer <laughs> manager of the Yankees. He's out of there. He is out of there. He's gone. That, Originally, that gone. the rumors were that it was his decision to leave, and then you know, we found out that those rumors were false, and it was the Yankee organization that no longer wanted to keep Joe Girardi around. Uh, some of them believing this is Brian Cashman's decision, you know, but I mean, he was there for a long time. It just, you know, we, we got this new young team. They outperformed. Uh, they pretty much outperformed. Yeah, they, they outperform expectations every year since he, he was uh, here. They weren't really expected to, you know, make the playoffs or make the run that they did. Definitely not the ALCS and took it to game seven against one of the best teams of the league. At the same time, Joe Girardi made a lot of mistakes over the years. The media, you know, bashed him a lot, and the media has a lot to do with, uh, you know, the Yankee fans. I mean, Yankee fans, some Yankee fans want to change. They, they voice their opinion uh, over the course of, you know, recent history. He obviously had that... Uh, that situation in game two of the divisional series where he did not do the the replay and fans wanted his head at that point. So any, I think anything short of a World Series this year, Girardi was pretty much out. And, you know, that's what ended up happening. Whether he deserved to go out like that, uh, you know, that's, that's for each individual person to decide. You know, some people feel he d didn't do good. Some people feel he did do good. So, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves as far as him outperforming analyst expectations by four or five games every year since he, uh, you know, took over the Yankees, so. I mean, shout out to Joe Girardi, man. He got he got a, a, a World Series win under his belt. As a player and a, at, and a coach exactly, for the Yankees, Exactly, as a player so. and a coach, so can't deny him. He definitely had a, had a good run. You know, I mean, I think it, it was more so the Yankees now just it was time for a change. They got the young kids in, you know, Girardi is, you know, more the he's the that the old school down with the season vets when that was the Yankees team. He was, you know, good for that. But I think they wanted to go in a different direction, get somebody that can really manage, you know, all the young guys, Judge and, and, and Sanchez. I mean, all of these guys are young. I mean the Yankees have a really young roster and they have a a good roster, a good young roster. And the good thing about the Yankees roster is they have a couple of the top prospects that's gonna be coming up uh next uh season. So 
Well, Yankees are in good shape. Again, you know, I definitely tip my hat to Girardi. You know, he got anytime you bring a championship to the city, you always gonna get love. So, shout out to Girardi. We'll miss you. Um, I'm gonna say this, man. Uh, maybe it's this drink that Ammo prepared for us today. <laughs> but it probably is. <laughs> Girardi got a raw deal, and I'm not a Yankee fan. And everyone out there knows I'm not a Yankee fan. I cannot stand the pinstripes. But he got a raw deal. They had the best winning percentage during his 10 years as the manager of the Yankees, right? They overhauled the roster last year, right? They traded all their vets. They went completely young. After they made their deals and they cut A-Rod last season, they went on a run and almost took over the wild card spot last year and made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. They came in this season with one of the youngest teams in the league, competed for the division, won the wild card, and were one game away from winning the World Series. So why won't the Yankees pay this man what he wants? That's what it really comes down to. The Yankees don't want to pay him what he wants. I don't want to hear, oh, him and Cashman didn't get along and him in the front office. Well, I don't, His job I mean, is to ball games, and he won ball games. Yeah. So why not pay the man? Because he didn't get that replay in the playoffs. The replay had nothing to do with the outcome, no, the he, overall outcome of the Yankee season. Yeah. It did, well, it did. They, they did end up winning that series, but, yeah. you know. You said World Series, it was Championship Series, but they probably oh, I'm sorry, were, yes. They, they were one game away from won. going to the World Series, yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. They were one game away from going to the World Series. Yeah, well, but this, in his 10 years, they had the best winning percentage of any team in baseball I during mean, that 10-year stretch. He won a World Series. He, he took his team to, what, two other ALCSs? He did. Why not pay the man? A lot of people, you know, it's almost like Monday night, Monday uh, morning quarterbacks where, you know, they they've been arguing Girardi's decisions all year, as far as you know, not taking somebody out and leaving this pitcher in, or using this pitcher instead of that pitcher, and you know. But it's if it works, then it works, and nobody talks about it. It's when it doesn't work that you know he goes and gets thrown under the bus. But I mean, I was upset about the replay thing, but we ended up winning that series, you know, so we ended up winning three games, and he gets along with the, the players for the most part. Mm -hmm. He threw Sanchez under the bus for saying that he can't field a few months back, so Sanchez wasn't happy about that, but he wasn't saying anything that isn't true. I mean, no they, they, yeah. they need to get a catcher that can field and throw Sanchez in the DH unless he can get better at it because, I mean, a lot of pass balls by him lead to a lot of runs, So so... You guys as Yankee fans, right? A lot of people are quick to bring up game two against Cleveland where he didn't call for the replay, right, on the hit batter. So did you feel the same way when he pulled Severino quick from the wild card game and went to the bullpen and allowed the bullpen to win that game for them? Well, first of all, let me just say this because my drink is in. Oh, I, I'm, I, just, I just, and the reason I asked, just, the reason just, I asked because that's me, a gutsy call. Let me just yeah. say this. That's a gutsy call out. Out. Am, that we, worked out. Are you, are you locked in, Ammo? Can, can we just come That's what right? I'm saying, though. We, the, we yeah. don't talk about the times when exactly. it works out. We only so, talk about the times that it doesn't. Exactly. So it's, it's easy to point out the, the one or two instances where, all right, it, it, it didn't go the way that we as the fans would like it to go. Well, that's the, that's the, that's but again, it's not for his decisions. I'm. I'm not saying that's not how it goes. We know that's yeah. how it goes. But it sucks, yes. Because Brian Cashman and Joe Girardi don't have the greatest relationship. We you I guys mean, don't want to keep them. It, you know, I mean it could be a little deep, but I mean, you know what? I I think depending on who they bring in as the GM um as, as Well, Cashman's going to stay. They're going to bring him. They're going to keep G Yeah, Cashman they're going to keep GM. Cashman. Cashman's probably going to stay there yeah. until I, he retires. I think retires. that's where yeah. that's where my disdain comes from. I don't like Brian Cashman. Brian Cashman is overrated. I mean, extremely overrated. He, I said it. He did extremely he overrated. Did, he did kind of pull the plug to put all of this in place. There's yeah. all these. He, he had was no a, choice. Yeah, but that I mean that doesn't mean it, it was going to work out. He you did. He did make these, these make the decisions to yeah to, well, to, to to trade Chapman to trade Miller then to get Chapman back. Well, he didn't bring, know it was going to happen this quick. No one knew it was going to happen. this No, quick. no, I don't mean as far as the playing good, but I'm saying but he made the trades. It was it was his decisions. But even uh, all right, so Chapman, yes, coming back that that was the speculation. We knew that he was it was. Come yeah. back. We were just renting. They yeah, were, the Cubs were just renting. But no him. one, you, there's no way you can tell me that last year at the trade deadline when the Yankees made all those moves, that a year from that point you would be in contention to win a World Series. 
No, well, no, nobody knew that. But I mean, but well, he, he I'm sure he, that was his, that I mean, was his big plan. Move. All right, but yeah. that's what I'm saying. He did it because he had no choice. The team was floundering. The team was struggling. Yeah, they were, they were old and they needed to get younger. Yeah. But that doesn't mean, I mean, he, he could have picked the wrong pieces and we could not be standing there. So we do got to give him his but credit. we don't know if these pieces are the right pieces moving forward. That's what I'm saying. It was a quick well, they, turnaround. Yeah, but we almost, thank you, thank you. We almost went to the World Series with the moves that Cashman made. Like I mean, with everything, it's a fifty-fifty chance. We don't know if it's gonna pan out, the, but it could. It could. He could have made all these moves, and the Yankees could be where the Mets are. The Mets almost won the World Series a couple years ago I'm with Matt about, Harvey. Right, this season, and I can't stand Matt Harvey. I'm talking about this season, where the Mets are this season, we could have made or these last moves. Season. Yeah, we last were in the season. playoffs last season. We could have been. We could have been horrible. Were though. we not in the playoffs last the season? The Yankees. What y'all doing? Lose? We we were in the playoffs last season. Were you? Yeah, we Nobody lost the wild card so game to the, to the Dodgers. Yeah. I mean, but, because do because Yankee fans are so blinded by everything they do. You know what I'm saying? Well, but let's call it what it is. You have 27 championships. Let's, you know, it, you can I be mean, blinded and, by the blame. And most of those championships happened That's before blame. the game was integrated. That's a, you know that's what I'm saying? Lance won in the playoffs last year? Yeah, that's we lost a, to the Dodgers in a one-game playoff. Kershaw pitched okay. it. I, I, I remember that. That's what I'm yeah. trying to tell you. We were there, we but what... To say at the moment, to, to say at the moment, oh yeah, it all worked out perfectly. No, it didn't. Because as a Mets fan, I can tell you right now, I don't like Matt Harvey. I didn't like him two years ago. So to say, oh yeah, Brian Cashman made all the right moves. No, he didn't. He lucked up. Well, no, I mean, Aaron Judge batted under two hundred last year. No one knew he was going to have this type of season. Well, Aaron Judge came up uh, from the the he it was or with the Yankees. It wasn't a move. It was we wouldn't, didn't trade to get Aaron oh. Judge. So you're saying but, it's all luck that Sanchez, you know Didi, and all these guys are yes. all working out? What was Didi? What, what was Didi before he took over at shortstop? Didi well, was a running player. Obviously, got to see the potential to give, give him. No, but that's what I'm saying. Didi has been improving the last four years. He, his numbers have, have but there's improved. no way. That again, Brian Cashman <coughs> is overrated from the standpoint of he didn't make the moves because he he foresaw something that was great about this unit. He made the moves because the team was already old; they had no choice. When he made the moves, the Yankees were not a yeah. But you're gonna contention. pick up young players. You're gonna pick up young players that you think are gonna do well in the future. Yeah. All right. So it's, maybe okay. it happened sooner than it's, people yeah, expected. Yeah, right. there is luck. There is luck involved. It happened that's a lot every, sooner than everybody expected. But that's every so now, GM. Every GM now, there's luck involved. Every every move you make, there's luck. So we can't just be like, oh, it's his luck that he didn't know. But he's still he 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 picked the players. He drafted the players that the Yankees drafted, mm -hmm. and he brought these these guys together. You got to give him his credit. No, no. But this is what I'm saying. I completely agree with you guys that there's always luck involved. There's always some sort of luck involved. But it's unfair that he's keeping his job and he's being praised as a GM that, oh, he put all this together. Meanwhile, Girardi actually had to manage these guys. He did. And Girardi is getting the short end of the stick. And it's like, oh, well, we're, we're good now. We're good. We're moving on from you. Excuse Brian Cashman should not get an extension. Brian Cashman, Brian Cashman is working with you an unlimited payroll. <laughs> And just and, and and making it every move well, he can make. The, every the every Yankees move. GM in history of baseball. Brian Cashman's been the GM for the a, last twenty five yeah, years. What an unlimited payroll, though. Every, any, but any he was have that. he was responsible for the the Jeter dynasty and all that too. That's like, uh, I believe that was Gene Michaels. We can look back on that. I believe that the scouts at that time that found Mariano Rivera, Andy Pettit, Posada, Jeter, they were more important to the foundation of that core four in that mid-90s team as opposed to Brian Cashman. Brian Cashman, we're praising him now. We forget. Uh, what about the money he threw at Kevin Brown back in the 90s? Oh, every, every manager made mistakes. That's not a years. manager. That's the general manager who's in charge of building the team, yeah. who's just throwing I mean, money at players. General manager, you know what I mean. I know, I know what you meant, that, man. I'm he, messing also, with you. he also threw a lot of money at, at CC, uh, AJ Burnett. And two years ago, you guys were ready to write CC off when he was overweight. And oh, who's, you, who's you guys? You weren't? I wasn't ready. That's, I said that's my guy. Uh, yeah, okay. I wasn't either. Okay. But Cliff, we're going to find that footage, Shout out to Cliff. the fan mail question. We're going to find that uh, footage, Cliff. Jerry from the Bronx, uh, since we're talking about the topic, Jer Jerry from the Bronx wrote in, are you guys surprised that Girardi is out as the Yankees manager? And I'm, I'm personally not surprised because, I mean, it was the end of his contract and... You know, they probably want to save some money. And, you know, Hal Steinbrenner runs it more of a business. We don't have the largest payroll. Uh, the Dodgers have that now by 20 something million, I think 21 million. We're still up there, no question about that. The Red Sox are only 2 million uh, less than us. So we're, we're still up there in the, uh, in the spending, you know. But um, 
they're saving money somewhere, I guess. But I wasn't. <laughs> The, the, I, I mean, mean the whole you, payroll when, is down, so that, yeah. When you got a lineup like that, I mean, I could coach the Yankees and, you know, and, and, they'll, and they'll win games. So. I, I'm surprised. We, we had this conversation as they were uh, getting ready to finish off Cleveland, I believe, two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And I thought Joe should keep his job. I thought I they mean, exceeded expectations not only this season but last season as well. But, uh, I mean, well. Yeah, I mean, well, every I, I year since he too, became but I'm not, the manager, yeah. the, they had the stats four or five games exceeding analysts' expectations from the beginning of the year yeah. to the end of the year. Like, but I'm if not they surprised said, that, that they let him go. Yeah. I, I, don't get me wrong. I'm not a Yankee fan. I'm not a big Joe Girardi fan. But I thought he had done his job. Uh, this was a very young team. Very young team. And that's why I say, you know, they – Whatever, he, they don't want to pay him if he has issues with Steinbrenner or whatever. But, you know, maybe they just, they also felt like, you know, maybe they want to bring somebody in different to bring up these young guys. I You know, I don't I don't know, but I'm not surprised at it. And I like Joe Girardi. Like, I'm I'm a fan of, of Joe Girardi. And I wouldn't mind if he was still, you know, going to be the, the, the manager. For, I wanted Don Mattingly to get the, the job. Like, well, for the, know, begin- yeah, in, for the, in the beginning, yeah, in the beginning I did want Don Girardi, Mat- but... Mattingly. But... You know, he won with the Yankees as a player. So I, I've, I've been a fan of, of Girardi, you know, and I, and I wanted him to have success with the Yankees. And he did. He had a lot of success. You know what I'm saying? Listen, there's a lot of teams, you know, he, he got one one ring in 10 years, but there's a lot of teams didn't get any rings during that during that tenure. So, you know, you, you can't be mad at, at Girardi for, you know, for, for the job that he did. He did a great job. But, you know, it's, it's the business, He's also man. following Joe Torre and the dynasty yeah. of all the World Series that they won. So mm-hmm. it makes it, you know, rough. It's a tough act to follow. And, you know, uh, Michael Kay was on first take, and he was saying how a lot of the Yankees organization is just analytics now. It's not, you know, old school. After that whole money ball thing and, you know, everything is analytics and decision making is all analytics now and Girardi was listening to to it but sometimes he would go against it and you know so they want somebody who's a yes man as the manager I guess or something so that's what it that, that's what it sounds like they they want someone who's going to be more about uh, analytics as opposed to uh traditional baseball thinking yeah well listen this is a lot going on but you know again you know shout out to, to Joe Girardi still did a great job but um, we definitely gonna we're gonna get into a little bit of football. But before we get into football, we're gonna show y'all the, the the youngins, the real youngins, not the young Yankees. You know, these are younger than the Yankees players. But uh, the Glen Cove Cardinals, they've been getting in, getting it in the gym. They've been on the field. They've been working out, and they finished the season with an undefeated record. So they about to go into the playoffs again and uh, try to bring that trophy back here to the real fans, real talk set. So we're going we gonna to check out some of the some of the highlights from the homecoming game uh, that, that, that they played, and, and we're just going gonna to rock out with the youngins, and when we come back, we're going to have some, some, some football talk because there's a lot going down in the NFL this week.
to the Cardinals, man. They out here, they out here balling for real. And I, I just want y'all to know that there's no ringers on the team. <laughs> they are no, I thought you <laughs> got LeBron James to <laughs> show my nah, that's, that's not know, Le- little that's not on that's the not side. LeBron. Um, oh my goodness! But uh, he, a big boy. He, he, he is a man child. I'm gonna have to nickname him Man is that, Child. Is that Too Tall Jones's kid? That it might be <laughs> Too Tall Jones's kid because because that boy he's about six feet right now. He's he's probably not even gonna make weight uh, uh, next year because he's only uh, eleven. Right now, he's just, yeah, but he's supposed to be like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, the doctor said. He already got a size 14 shoe. Oh. The kid, yeah, so, so that's man child right so there. So the Knicks are looking for <laughs> so, I know. You know what? Let me make a, let me make a phone call, Stan, Maybe man. Maybe need to switch sports. You know, LeBron yeah. played football, but basketball. Oh, he, no, he plays basketball, better. too, though. He does play basketball, too. There you too. go, boom. So let me make a phone call to the coach and see if the, you know, he can go to the to the Knicks uh, training camp or something because they could use all the help that they can get right now. It's not looking good at all. But Ladybug's in the building. Yes, Got she the is. room I'm on going this side. On. See, I came. I wasn't going to stay at the bar, but... <laughs> Just well, I mean, you thought, took no. four shots already. I'm glad you came over. Goodness. That's don't respond to any of these allegations. Don't respond to any of these allegations over here. Now. No. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's your favorite ladybug, and I am here with the room email. As always, every week I try and keep you guys up with what's going on in this athletic world that we have right now. Anyway, since we were already on football, once again, shout outs to the Cardinals. Number six, I don't know, you're going to be doing something different. Got to watch you. <laughs> Didn't LeBron wear number six? When he <laughs> See, I don't know. Yeah, it, may, it, may, it may come There's history no repeat yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just dead. a coincidence, right? But shout outs to Kaepernick. You know, we always love what he's doing. I'm always supporting what he does. But it has been confirmed that he landed a $1 million book deal. Now, we don't, you know, they're not... Um, explaining the subject of the book, what the book is going to be about, but they are budgeting one million dollars for this book promotion and whatever it is. For a publishing company not to really know what the subject matter is about, but still offer the deal, it's something like, okay, we really we want to hear whatever you got to say at this point. Mm-hmm. And we know Kaepernick has a lot with everything going on in the NFL world and people really not picking him up for whatever the reason may be. But his activism has really been taking uh, over the whole fact that, you know, he's really not playing. Now, the fact that he is doing this book signing, you know, you're going to see a lot more promotion, a lot more marketing. His face is going to be back out again. Like I said, we don't know if it's going to be football based, if it's going to be an activism type book, something that is his probably autobiography. We, you know, they're, they're speculating right now, but would, you, would are you guys excited to hear? Well, first of all, let me just say this. Oh, Emma, is, um, but you, look. I'm sorry, Emma. Could you, can uh, we, can uh, we keep this clip? Oh, this is the all clip right. I need. Now. What I'm going to say in regards to that, first of all, you know, shout out to Cat, man. You know, I, I I think I'm going to have to buy the book and, and, and read it. I mean, obviously, it's, we know it's going to be involved in the protests and all of this stuff that's going on. But you know what? You know, one thing I will say about Cap, I mean, congratulations on, on the million dollar book deal. But, you know, he does donate a lot, you know, to, to various charities. You know, he's doing, the, he has the Know Your Rights campaign uh, moving right now. You know, so I know he's gonna continue to uh, to you know to, to donate and continue to just just help out with with every cause that he possibly can. So you know, the, the more the merrier. Plus, y'all know I'm always about you know brothers getting to the check. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm interested to see what's in the book. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously we know some of the background on the situation. Kind of uh, guess what's in the book. You know? No, no, but, <laughs> but not only that, but, no, but some, some, some of the other, some yeah, of the yeah, other no, behind just, the scenes yeah. things because he yeah. was recently invited to the next round of meetings yeah. uh, mm-hmm. with the uh, NFL and, and, and the owners. Yeah. So I'm interested to, you know, see what's in the book. Some things that maybe we don't see yeah. front line, you know, that mm-hmm. go on behind the scenes. So I'm, I'm definitely intrigued by it. Yeah, you know I'm saying, and and for them to drop a million, it's like okay, like like my I thing need is a they million went, dollar book deal, man. That's what I'm so saying. Like, like I have some interesting like, stuff to say uh, too. Right? I could drop a little book a over here, well, right? Maybe you want to hear some of this. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm kneeling every show from that one. Trying to get, get that book deal, like. I'm kneeling on every joint. I'm with, I'm with you, I'm man. kneeling for the Eagles, too, Cliff. I see you, man. I know, yeah, you know, I know what, they don't want to respect the Eagles Cliff, over here, Cliff. You, I'm, I'm kneeling on them. Did you spike the drink with something green? I actually like... meant to take a knee during the opening intro. But I said that I <laughs> I'm kneeling. Cliff, if it's a mill involved, I'm going to tell kneeling. you again, keep that negativity away from me, man. Keep it away from me. 
You don't want this problem, Cliff. You don't want this. I'm, I'm going to go in. <laughs> I've been trying to be nice the whole show. I didn't say nothing the whole show. I'm going to go in, though. See, okay. So wow, you he threw it out there like that. He threw yeah, it out there like that. He did an intro, but they got it. the fly he eagles it like he that. Did. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna give him that. He made sure the drinks were green. Exactly. Too. I know. You, I know you had a conversation. Ammo in there like that. Yeah, Cliff, this week. Well played, brother. Well played. Settled. <laughs> well you know played. what? Settled yet strong. Cliff, yeah. <laughs> you on timeout, and you can't speak to me about football until the Eagles have a Super Bowl ring. Now. Like, it's okay. Now you guys are blaming each other lifetime, for ammo's man. good drink. This was a good drink. Now they try to flip it. That is a lifetime it. ban, right? I'm sorry, Stat Man. No, Cliff. All right. You know what? All right. Fine. You can talk to me about football if the Eagles make it to the Super Bowl and don't lose by more than two touchdowns. Then you can talk to me about football. <laughs> That's probably a lifetime ban too, though, right? Still, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 Ammo didn't have nothing to do with this. Ammo didn't have nothing to do with this. No, because it tastes good. The drink tastes good. She was not involved in the conspiracy. Exactly. Can we raise our glasses for Ammo, guys? Yeah, we do it for Ammo. This is for here. Ammo, not, this is, this not the to, Eagles. This is to greet <laughs> the conspiracy Green Gate exactly. over with. Exactly. We won't be talking about Green Gate. Exactly. Cheers to you, Ammo. You know we love you, man. Appreciate you. What else you got, Ladybug? So talking about uh, <laughs> people and conspiracies and everything. Mm -hmm. Charles Barkley goes on because you know he's seen uh, Lavar Lonzo. You know all them. He's you know he's always had his one two about the ballers as we call them. So he went to go say his piece about. Uh, you know the gameplay and how he felt and he said you know what kid did good but I knew how I could have got him could have got in his head and talked about his daddy the whole time I'm like really First really all, whenever, I, whenever I see Barkley I still I go back to Space Jam and see him walking all oh endlessly. with the I got a basketball Jones yeah Ooh. yeah like every time I see Barkley and I love Barkley though I, I like I well, love Barkley yeah, yeah. I play too. I play too. You're like that's yeah. not Barkley that's yeah. just somebody who looks it like looks him. like Barkley yeah but I, I love Barkley though you know what Barkley is from a different era in basketball where an enforcer was really an enforcer mm -hmm. so in this you know in this situation I completely understand you know this is not like. You, Lonzo Ball, you know, if he came into the league and LeVar Ball, you know, was as mouthy as he was, and you had to go up against Kevin McHale and, and Bird and, and Robert Parrish. It was Paris, a mental game at that point. The Bad Boy yeah. Pistons. Yeah, you know, Lynn Bad the boys, end of the game. The Knicks, you know, with, with Mason. Yeah, like, okay. it would have been a two-piece. Yeah, he might have been. He, I don't, you know what? I don't <laughs> think LeVar would be saying this much if he had to go into that NBA. Because, Bam, yeah, they would have they would have put, you know, Lonzo on his butt a few times. You know, welcome to the league. And kept it going. Like, yeah. get up. And the, and the closest person I could think of is Draymond Green, and he ain't nothing like. You oh no, nah, he don't got. Mm -hmm. He ain't got nothing on the on, on, I mean, on, on the nineties Knicks. Not on only, the 90s. yeah, but uh, I mean, not only is he not close enough to them, but he's the only one. Like Statman said, he's like yeah. the only one. Yeah. That's he been, so that's once no one really once once every month yeah. and a half you got to face a Draymond Green type. Dude. Exactly, and that's yeah. it. You ain't really you ain't got them kind yeah. of guys no more. Perkins used to kind of be, you know what I mean, but he's not. In, yeah, he's you know, not in the league. In the league so. anymore. But you get with those guys. Guys, like you get him with Iverson back in the day, probably would have been the problem. Well, Iverson would have dropped fifty on. Him. You yeah, see Iverson, what I mean? Like Iverson, you, get, you get one of those people and easy. then drop fifty. AI, AI it would have been, been over. Bad. The crossover? As soon as he came across over. half court, it was like, yo, I'm breaking you down. And I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm dropping 50 on you. And, and like, you're not going to do anything about it, but watch no. my highlight tape as I go past you. Yeah. And go back to your dad. There was That's a it. one play, you know, <laughs> in the I'm gonna game. And I'm going to give you the jersey <laughs> after the game. Yeah. I'm going to give you my jersey after the game, yeah. after I drop 50 the, on you. The one play with the Wizards where John Wall blew past him and threw it. No, he, he'll sign his jersey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> AI, every play, he would have yeah. blew right past Lonzo Ball. Because and this is why, like I, you know, I'm I, I'm really waiting to see Kyrie and Steph play the Lakers because when you got a guard, serious ball handlers, he's gonna be in a world of trouble. It's, it's not gonna look good. So I I'm, I'm waiting the to see those four times. So. Nah, I, yeah. I agree with Kyrie. I think I think Steph isn't gonna buy into the hype. Uh, 
the Warriors have that type of team. I don't really see Steph buying into. What's well, not about buying into? Yeah, hey, he's, his he's handle just is, do what he, he normally Yeah, that's what yeah, he's gonna play. No, no, but his handle. Know, like, what I'm saying is like Steph isn't gonna look at it like a one on one type thing. No. He's gonna be like, yo, I'm just gonna do what not. I normally do. But and you if still I drop thirty five on you, I drop thirty five. But you still gotta go. Kyrie, Kyrie, no, Kyrie, no, Kyrie, being petty. Yes, I could definitely see Kyrie saying, yo, I'm gonna break you down because every time I come down, Kyrie's petty, and you know he has this issue. You know, Lonzo talking exactly. Excuse me, not Lonzo. Oh, his pop. Yes, Levar talking about you know his father. So Kyrie, he's going to go into that game. Yeah. He's going to destroy uh, Lonzo Ball and, and let LeVar say something after the game. Because when they play that second time, it's going to be even worse. It, it, it's going to be one of those do it again. Yeah. Watch. Exactly. And Russell Westbrook, because Westbrook plays West. with that chip on mm-hmm. his shoulder. Yeah, so he's... Where he, West might say, yo, I want 50 on his dude. Yeah, exactly. Just because. Just because. Yeah. Just, 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 yeah. So, so we, we got to wait Bar- time, Barkley, Barkley knew, knew what it was at that point in time. He knew that, you know, this game is different. If he was there back in the day, nah, he, he would have cried by the end of the game. Yeah. He would have been like, I don't want to play no more. Or somebody would have fought. <laughs> I don't want to play no more. <laughs> I don't think anybody but, uh, in the Lakers Chris got Charles enough heart. Punching them in the face. <laughs> yeah, I don't. One of those. Yeah, I don't think nobody in the Lakers roster right now got that type of heart to to fight uh, any team that had Barkley on it during that, that time. Exactly. These guys don't seem like the type. <laughs> you right. right on that. You right on listen, that. you know, I love Brooke Lopez. He ain't that type. You know, Brandon Ingram. That's my guy from Duke. He don't seem like that type of guy, you know. Yeah, you right, Randall, they would have just, they they would have watched, they would have, they would have watched. So let's just even, wait. When, when Patrick Beverly, you know, was was all in his face and kind of pushed him to the ground, they ain't, they ain't about that life. I mean, in Barkley right went and fought Shaq, and Shaq yeah. was like. It's yeah, the, exactly, it's but that's exactly. bold. Nobody's bold like that no more. Foot on, foot on them, Everybody so. cute in the NBA now. Anyway, talk about NBA. <laughs> John Saley tells the commissioner, Adam Sil- Silver, to lift the league ban on medical, medical marijuana. He says it's no point in, you know, the league having it. Yeah, you need to lift that. You know, no, nothing's wrong with a little puff, puff pass. We can smoke together. Like, he threw a little incentive after making the proposal. Like, listen, let's smoke together. Let's talk about this. Well, first of all, Ladybug, let me say this. Ammo, could you get uh, what? another drink? No, why are you offering ammo to the Ammo, second ammo. <laughs> ammo, if you could bless me with another yeah. one of those. <laughs> I like, no, because Ladybug, I like how you transitioned that because, you know, we were talking about those enforcers. John Sally was one of those mm-hmm. enforcers with the Bad Boy Pistons, NBA champion, mm-hmm. movie star. He was in Eddie. Remember, he bad was boy. one. He was, he was in Bad Boy. He was in Bad Boy, too, when he stood up on Martin. Martin tried to talk crazy. Yeah, he had to flex on him real quick. He had to look up. Yeah, like, wait a minute. But, I mean... At this point, I mean, you got, you know, every, everybody in the league, I feel like, you know, and, and, and not even just basketball. Just athletes but these guys, in general. Athletes in general, you know. Hussein, uh, Michael Phelps, uh, I guess. Are smoking marijuana. Um, you know, and I, and I wrote an article um, last year mm-hmm. in, a medical, in a marijuana magazine. They asked me to, to write something in, in regards to the marijuana smoking in, 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 in professional sports in general. Um, and there's a lot of athletes that that smoke and openly smoke marijuana. You know, I mean, he, Ricky Williams left a career in football yep. because he wanted to smoke marijuana. Now he has a, a marijuana gym. You know, right That's now. still striving. It's um, still you know, there. and and there's there's you know, this is not like we're just pulling this out of the sky and you know, there's benefits to mar- to medical marijuana. No, this is actually proven documented, you know, research that shows that medical marijuana does, uh, you know, help in a lot of cases, you know. So and then on top of that, when you look at now, it's it's, it's being, you know, legalized, it's, you know, throughout the country, little by little, you know, for recreational, it, it's starting to come around as well. Massachusetts, uh, not too long ago, added to the list of, of states that are, are it's legal for recreational and medical purposes. New York right now, you know, it's legal for medical purposes. I mean, we know Colorado, you know. So I think it's going to, to soon enough, it'll be that way. It'll come off the banned substances list. I think that, but it's more of a, of a legal thing right now because it's not legalized. Everywhere. Throughout the so country. You just can't. So, you know, because it and could even be. even the ones that are it's legal state-wise, that it's still illegal federally. Exactly. So you have exactly. That so it's kind, of, it's kind of rough right now. But I think eventually... As more and more states continue to legalize it for recreational purposes as well as medical purposes, I think it'll it'll come off the banned substance list. Well, we did get a fan mail question on the subject. Tommy from Boston wrote in, 
What's your thoughts on former NBA commissioner David Stern saying uh, marijuana should be off the banned substance list? So this is, you know, the former commissioner. So, I mean, that's that's kind of a big deal. Because he was know, against it completely yeah. during his Cause, time cause as commissioner. It's not performance enhancing, so... Yeah. It shouldn't, you know, I get the fact that it's illegal, but at the same time, if it's not performance enhancing, I don't really think it should be affecting their suspensions. Yeah. And I can understand it more during his tenure as commissioner Correct. because mm -hmm. we it's not like now where, you know, we got all these different states that have it legalized for medical purposes and recreational and purposes. people actually being open. It was very yeah. taboo at that, at that, at that, that point in time. We're talking about still the 80s, the 90s. People are now being more open and 2017 more... right now. Yeah. You know, so... People are more comfortable talking about it. Back then it was like, oh, yeah. man, I want to know. Like, no, yeah. you can't... Well, mm, you're right. you can't you're gonna lose like your whole career. Yeah. Right. Now there's people, like you said, people are researching. They're really trying to do the, the chemistry and yeah. the biology and the, all the, you know, pieces behind it because people still have that stigma about it. But if you give those facts, then it makes somebody at ease and it's like, oh, okay. Because it's like, if mm -hmm. you can take a Tylenol, some people can... Use cannabis, yeah. or and, marijuana, whatever. And, and if you look at you, you have, you know, you got heavyweight boxing champions of the world smoke marijuana. You've got Olympic gold medalists in Michael swimming Phelps, we had on the and show. track that smoke marijuana. Right we have Michael Phelps. You right have here. Major League Baseball Cy Young Award winners. You have NBA champions that all smoke marijuana. So, you know, I mean, I think at this at this point, you know. We could stop like, putting those boys in trouble for the <laughs> Mary yeah, Jane. It's, it's, for the Mary Jane usage. Nah, ammo. nah. It's, but it's like you said, Trip. It's a different. It's a different Arrow time. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, with all the medical research and advancements, you know, we we understand it's, it's mm -hmm. different now. It's, yeah. There's it's, nothing it's wrong time. with it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's time. It's, it's not a performance enhancer. I mean, the Zach Randolph wouldn't be doing community service right now. But his actions. Stop, just stop right there. <laughs> let's just, let, 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 let. You can't overdose. Easy. Listen, Trip, I know you're getting a little excited. I'm just saying I'm just saying, <laughs> okay, Zach Randolph was having a party. Zach, and, Zach, and he was getting a party the anyway. Zach that's different. No, exactly. Yeah. That's Zach that's a different the party. Bricks, that's the bricks in the trunk. But that's, that's a different party. Parties. Okay, anyway, so let me wrap no, this no, up. Let me call, he's going let me, to a whole nother party. Let me party. call Uncle Snoop for no. this one. Let me <laughs> let me shout right out before I wrap up. Before I wrap up, let me shout out Clay Thompson. He went on social media saying that he's gonna donate a thousand dollars per point scored for the next three days, next three games he has. And this money is going towards the Redwood Credit Union Wildlife Relief Fund. It is, uh, it's for the forest fires in Northern California. You know, it's a lot of those, the dry season. So it's a lot of fires, the wildlife, you know, the trees, everything is just damaged. It's in ruin in California. So he decided to take the next three games and donate a thousand. Every time he scores a point, whether it's two, three, whatever, He's gonna donate a thousand dollars to the wildlife relief fund. So shout out to Clay Thompson. Thank you so much for taking care of our environment because number forty five is not doing that. Don't so thank, thank you, Clay Thompson. I'm Clay just Thompson saying. Clay Thompson about to go into a shooting slump for the next week. <laughs> he's not about to donate no. <laughs> Now, if I guess it's been, I guarantee you, Clay don't <laughs> average more than twelve over the next week. <laughs> Let, let's hope he plays the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right. If they, they play the Suns, anyway, be good. on that note, no, no, no. Yeah. And, and all seriously, <laughs> seriousness, though, you know, well. I definitely no. But you know what? He, he stepped up and he's trying to do something. And you guys know, you know, how we feel about that. When, you, when you're doing something to help out your community, yes. uplift your community, we're always going to support that and get behind I'll drink that. today. Which is why I drink we today. have our, our uh, charity tours. And the next stop, of course, is going to be Balling for Peace, uh, November 7th at the Bowling Alley in Times Square at Baltimore Lanes. So we're going to be there to support Balling for Peace, H2O. And then, of course, the following Tuesday is going to be the first round of the Real Fans Real Talk NBA 2K Tournament, the second annual Real Fans Real Talk NBA 2K Tournament. is going down again at Bleachers, which is right up the block from the Barclays Center. If you got game, if you think you got game, if you might dream about having some games sometime in the near future, it's only $50 to register for the tournament. And, of course, the winner gets $500. Plus, we got a couple of other prizes that we're going to give out from some of our sponsors. So make sure you guys hit us up 
on Instagram, on Twitter, at Real Fan Talk, on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk, on the website, realfansrealtalk.com, or you can send in a fan mail question and ask about it, fan mail at realfansrealtalk.com. And of course, the Final Four will be playing at the Barclays Center during the Nets Pacers game on Sunday, December 17th, and they will get the $500 cash prize at hand, the winner of the tournament. And then you can go enjoy the rest of the game right after that. So make sure you guys sign up. The Eventbrite is up. Uh, the link is on the, is on the site, and you can also check the Instagram for the link to the Eventbrite if you guys want to register through there, or just holler at either myself, Statman, Eric, or Ladybug, and we'll get you the info. All right. Thanks for Ladybug for coming on, not being suspended. Legend in two games, Trip Young, of course, Ammo, Ammo, anything quick Yo, you want to say to sign us off? Happy Halloween. It is. Yeah, that That's Boxing our final throw. <laughs> Woo wee! Ow! Thank you for joining us on this edition of Real Fans Real Talk, and we'll see you next time, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Get out of here. Wait a minute. I need one more of these before we go. Oh, he's oh. Oh, oh the party ain't stopping. Just gonna be going up. There. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Just started. Good actually. night. <laughs> We got the head of Talk.com. The Arthur Dominic Trip Young and Intern Tom. For the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real fans, realtalk.com got it. They got the hottest bloggers. It's Jeremy Linhurt. We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the archives even tell a neighbor tell him bobby sent you from spring to winter tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda certified co-sign you know what i'm about son real fans real talk.com i'm out one real fans real talk real fans real talk real fans real talk.com real fans real talk.com real fans real talk real fans real talk real fans real talk.com real fans real talk.com